Good morning, friends. It is Monday again, February 11, 2019. Can you believe that? Anyway, it's uh, five something in the morning. Not sure. I don't have a clock in front of me, but that's okay. It doesn't matter, does it? Because by the time this gets uploaded onto the internet, it's going to be later than that anyway. But anyway, I want to talk to you today about something that's got me always perplexed and and I think it's per, it's a big enough idea that it ought to be a little bit perplexing but um, I wanted to talk this morning about having the mind of God and uh, one of my favorite passages in the scriptures I've got a lot of favorites but um, one of my favorites is from the book of John in the last part of the book of John, as it's telling the story of Jesus and, and uh, you know, the account of him on earth, God and man, uh, there's this part uh, toward the end of the book before Jesus is delivered over to the, to the authorities to be crucified when he's with his disciples. And there's a section called the High Priestly Prayer. It's in John 17. And in that prayer, we get like this really unique, I think, perspective because what we have is we have Jesus, who is God. Jesus is the Son of God. He is God. He's fully man and fully God. And here we have a recorded time where he is, he is praying to God. So we have God praying to God. It's sort of like, it's sort of like the, uh, the, the eye of the storm, if you will. We get a glimpse of what God's intention is, like his internal monologue. Like when we stop and you're uh, looking at, you're just sitting around and you're thinking, well, this is God, what's happening in God's mind, I think. As he, as he, uh, as he prays and asks his, or he makes known his intent, he shares his will with himself, shares his will with us, um, so we can know what God wants. We get kind of a neat glimpse of what God wants for us, for our lives, and for the church, and this reason that He came and is doing what He's doing. <clears throat> and um, I'm not sure what you know if I should read the whole thing, but the gist of His prayer. So you got God the Father, God the Spirit, God the Son, and you were catching a glimpse inside of of the motion that goes on inside of that mind, inside of his heart and his mind, his spirit. And the gist of what Jesus prays is that he, he he's saying that while I've been here, this is what I've done. I've given them my word. I've kept them in your name. And, and uh, a reading here uh, in like verse 13, he says, but now I'm coming to you and these things I speak in the world that they may uh, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they're not of the world just as I am not of the world. And then he says, I don't ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They're not of the world just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. That, uh, your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself, that they may also be sanctified in the truth. And so, he's like, he's praying for his disciples, and he's praying for the church. And a little bit later on, he asks uh, for those like us who would believe later on. And then he asks this. This is so. This is like the intention of God, sort of swirling down into into his his, his prayer for us. That he says that they may all be one. Just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. He says, The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me, and loved them, even as you loved me. So, <clears throat> as we get a glimpse, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, uh, you remember that movie Twister? That was a good one, not from like 90-something. 
and their whole the goal of that little research team was to get those little probes up inside of the tornado so they could see what was going on inside the, of the tornado. I think this this prayer that we get with Jesus is like us taking a look inside, if God was a storm, if God was a swirling tornado, so what is inside there that drives it? It's this idea that just like Jesus is in God, that we would be in Jesus just as he is in God, and that all of us together would be one. And <clears throat> it's interesting because I think that so many times we lose sight I'm not trying to find fault, but I think a lot of times as we are going through our lives, you know, trying to be Christians, and we uh, we want to do what's right, and we want to, uh, it, you know, we want to worship God with our lives, but we find that so many times we shape our actions and our intentions based on something that we think is the right thing to do, not on what Jesus stated his actual intention was. For example, we... Uh, a lot of times focus more, I think, on uh, sharing the news of Jesus with people. And that's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. But God's main goal is that we become like him. And I think that my philosophy has always been that as we become like him, then we're going to do what he does. And that is to share about Jesus and share about God's love and his mercy and his grace and his calling, his real life that he offers. But when we look inside the mind of God and uh, we, we see what he asks God for, what Jesus asks God for, it's that we all be one, is that we are made like him, and that we're made one. You know, after that, <clears throat> Jesus obviously was raised into heaven, ascended into heaven, and it says that the disciples were in one place and they were, supposed, they were told to wait and wait on God and wait for a the, another counselor to come and then we, we read about the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was sent down to the church and from that day on we have access to the mind of God through the Holy Spirit and you know there's a lot of different theories about that and how that works and some are formulaic and some aren't but what we do know is that we have access to the very mind and the spirit of God in our lives to know uh, to think like him and to know what his will is for for our days and for our actions and 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 uh, to have him navigate help navigate through our lives and so i guess it might be a real simple offering this morning but number one what does god want for us he wants us to be like him he wants us to be in him just as Jesus is in God he wants us to be in Jesus in God one that's our goal and so today as we go through life as we encounter people situations remember that God's intention is to draw us close 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 to himself that we would be one in him the second thing is is God has given us his mind in second or first Corinthians, it says that we have the mind of Christ. It says, who can understand these things? But ah, we have the mind of Christ. We can understand these things. And so, <clears throat> excuse me. No, one, he wants to make us in one in him. Two, he's given us his spirit to allow us to have his mind. So we can have his mind. So we have to ask God for more of his spirit. Ask God for his Holy Spirit in our lives. So we can see and navigate life like he with his eyes with his heart with his spirit so pray for that ask for that make space for his spirit in your heart and in your life and the third thing i think i just want to just touch on it just a little bit just give a little touch is that um is what that looks like when that's lived out because i think maybe some some people might think that it looks like some kind of like uh powerful prophet kind of guy that goes through and always has the answers and thus saith the Lord kind of stuff but really um, when it's I think when it's lived out when I've seen it lived out I think when I've been blessed enough to be able to live out the mind of God in si certain situations and certain times <clears throat> when Jesus himself lived out his presence here on earth listen to what it looks like it's in uh, 
Philippians, it talks about what it looks like. It says, uh, again, we find the word mind. It says, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, we're going to describe his behavior now, or his the way he was, is, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. But see, when we live with the mind of God, when we uh, live with the Holy, with His Spirit at our center, it's not going to look like some powerful. There may be times when He wants to exert power through us. It might look like something that will blow our minds, but. Most days it's going to be looking like selfless love. So make space for that today too. Selfless love through us to be, we could be molded into the shape of Jesus inwardly and outwardly and help to build his kingdom on earth. So maybe this little thought for today. You have the mind of Christ available to you. The mind of God to navigate your days. To not live with complete and total uncertainty but to be one with him. Uh, resting in the shelter, the shadow of the Almighty uh, in Him. Well, anyway, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank You for this day that You've given us. We thank You for watching over us, for providing for us the things that we need for a life with You and in You. We thank You, Lord, for giving us Your Spirit, for sending us Your mind, Your heart, the things that drive you and making them available to us that we can participate not only in the reconciliation of the world but in your mind to participate along with your very spirit in this world lord i ask today for your church for uh, those of us that are pursuing you and want to live in you and with you that you would bless us with your spirit more of your spirit lord that we could live out your intention for us to draw us to yourself, not to impose a moral code, not to impose our will on others or just to order life so that we, it makes us comfortable. But Lord, you called us into your very self. So I pray, Lord, today that you would give your church a bigger vision of what it means to be like you, a bigger vision of uh, what it means to have your mind and to be able to live out your will with these vessels that you've given us. <clears throat> we thank you, Lord, that you are faithful and that you are powerful enough to finish what you have started in us and to bring it to completion. So we offer you ourselves today to have your will in us, to be glorified by our lives, and to glorify us too with yourself. So these things we ask through and in Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you, friends, for watching this morning. I pray that you have a good day and that God's intent and power come to life in your life today. And if uh, <clears throat> maybe you're seeing this for the first time today, I know we've only made, I've only made a couple of videos. Reach out, comment, let me know that you're watching, that, you, that you're, uh, I don't know, give me some suggestions or comments and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.